All right, hello everyone, and thank you once again for joining us on the, on the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today I have Chuck Moeller with me. Chuck is the founder, CEO, advisor, and executive coach at MCG Partners. He's the best selling author of the new book, The Rise of the Agile Leader Can You Make the Shift? MCG Partners specializes in leadership and talent optimization, aligning business and people strategy for maximum results. Chuck, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Michael. Happy to be here. Awesome. Let's dive right into the questions. Chuck, question number one, why did you become a coach? You know, I guess that's the that's the big question for any of us to decide to become a coach. For, you know, for me, it's a very personal story. Uh, 1999, I was running a large global consulting practice, successor to the CEO. Uh, he asked if I had a 360 assessment. I said no. I ended up getting a pretty difficult 360 assessment. It wasn't fun to receive it. But it was very, very pivotal moment in my in my life and my career because that feedback, what I did with that feedback, really helped create a path of development and self awareness that helped me get to the next level of my career. Where I became a CEO for five years, and and I eventually started my own firm 14 years ago. And became an executive coach. So that experience and and how helpful it was for me to kind of go through feedback and self awareness and, and leadership development really was, I think, a springboard in terms of myself becoming an executive coach. Nice. That's great. That's like best case scenario of results from a 360 degree review there, huh? <laughs> yeah. It, it, no, they're never easy for anybody. I don't care what the feedback says. Okay. It's like anything else, what are you going to do with that in, in terms of how you, how you help yourself and help others? Nice. Good stuff. Question number two, what are you doing in your coaching business today that's unique? You know, the coaching professions really exploded the last five plus years. I felt I said that 15 years ago, 20 years ago. So it's been growing profession for quite some time. I think I think to be unique in executive coaching, you have to have some type of position, right? Some type of thought leadership. So what we ended up doing and what I did two years ago is I took a step back and I asked myself and my team, you know, what is the future of leadership? Mm -hmm. And uh, that embarked it in doing research. We interviewed CEOs around the world, clients did some research. And we came up with a new leadership model we call the Agile Leader, which became the, the premise for the book that you mentioned earlier that I wrote and was published this past summer. So we have thought leadership around a very specific type of leadership capability and model, which we can coach on. We can develop individual leaders, leadership teams. We mm -hmm. can assess using our own proprietary 360 assessment as well as using a behavioral assessment. So having, I think, your own voice, your own position, some type of thought leadership, I think is a really an important way of differentiating yourself in the marketplace. Nice. Question number three, how do you find your clients? Most of our client work is business to business, B2B. And, you know, some of it's the old fashioned, especially early on, which is, you know, get out there and network with your, your clients, your, your own network and, and get introductions. And then once you establish yourself, it's the referral, right? You know, your, your ability to do a good job, develop strong relationships. I think a mistake a lot of, of coaches and consultants make is they don't really cultivate their relationships once the work is done. I really make, make a concerted effort just to reach out to past clients, past contacts and, mm -hmm. and maintain a connection. I will sometimes send them an article. I'll send sometimes something that we've written, whether it's a blog or an article or pass out some research or best practice that we've seen. So I think staying connected to your network, cultivating that network is really critical. So most of our, our new client work is referrals. Occasionally we'll, we'll go out and find clients directly, but we're always cultivating our relationships. We're always trying to expand our network, I think is really critical as well. I love that. Yeah, it's a, it's a relationship business for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Question number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? I think the biggest challenge is always staying relevant, right? It's, you know, I think, and especially for those people who are individuals, you know, you're so busy trying to get coaching work and delivering coaching work, then you don't find time to uh, either uh, focus on your networking or getting introductions or finding new opportunities. Um, and then the other, the other sort of leg on the stool is, you know, what are you doing to continue to improve yourself, right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, how do you stay abreast of best practices new trends, new thought leadership. So it's really important to stay focused on all three, right? You got to be obviously present and working with your clients, making sure you're, you're staying proactive and you're staying really invested in your client relationships. You've got to stay really focused on your network and your market and expanding that and looking for introductions. 
and you got to really invest in yourself in terms of your skill set, your your capability, um, your ability to to make a difference. I, I think that's the hardest thing to do is to keep keep an active balance on all those three things. Mm -hmm. Question number five: If you had a do over in your coaching business, what would that be? I, I, I that's a really tough question. You know, it, it, I guess it's always it's always easy to go back and say hindsight's twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. I think for me, because I'm a little unique in the sense I'm an executive coach, which I have been for 14 years, but I also started and then I run, you know, a, a, a consulting and exec leadership development firm called MCG Partners, where I, I act as CEO and I also do some business development. And I, I think, you know, if I was going to do it all over again, I probably would have surrounded myself with more people sooner, <laughs> mm -hmm. especially additional executive coaches. We, we had executive coaches for the first nine years, but really the fast last five years really expanded that coaching population where we can really offer, especially for Fortune 500 clients, a, a real large number of coaching options, not just mm -hmm. throughout the US, but around the world. So I probably would have done that sooner, but I was also trying to balance keeping the business small where I could balance that in my, in my personal, my family life with my children, my wife. So but if I do it over again, I probably would do that. I think the rest of my journey, I, I probably would keep the, the way, you know, the way it's kind of evolved. Sure. So just to, to clarify a little bit, you, it sounds like you're saying you would maybe hire quicker and, and scale yeah. quicker. Yeah, I, I would have I would have surrounded myself by adding uh, more coaches faster than I did. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. OK, cool, cool. And now, Chuck, if you're ready for the bonus question, what sure. is one book? What is one book that you recommend all your clients read? Oh boy, that's a really tough one. You know, there's so many great books out there. Yeah, you know, there so many, so many of our clients have so many different needs, right? You know, and and I'm, of course, I'm not going to take the bait and say my own book, but 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 uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. But uh, what, I what I would say is, you know, I, I think I think the book on on emotional intelligence is a great book uh, for a lot of leaders that are new leaders. I think the first 90 days is a, is almost a, a requirement because. You know, what hasn't changed, if you can believe this in 20 years, is that new leader turnover uh, is still one out of every two leaders don't make it after 18 months, which is a, is a, is a crazy number. It's not an acceptable number. And, and so many organizations aren't preparing their leaders to their new leaders to either whether they get promoted, but especially when they're brought in from the outside. That's where most of that statistic or high num turnover is coming from. So I think really focusing on what, well, how to be successful as you onboard in your first 90 days, I think is really, really critical. And there's so many other great books out there. I mean, I, I really can't even think of all of them, but I think, I think emotional intelligence, I think onboarding and a new leadership role, those are probably the two that stand out to me, at least initially. Great. Great. Chuck, uh, do you have anything else that you would like to add or pitch or promote? And also where can people connect with you online? Sure. I have actually two websites because it's my business website, but because of the book, we also created my own personal website. Uh, the business website is uh, mcgpartners.com. Uh, my website is uh, Chuck Moller. It's M-O-L-L-O-R.com. Uh, you can reach me through email at chuck.m-o-l-l-o-r uh, at mcgpartners.com. No, I, I, I would say that you know we're, we're, we're a leadership and talent optimization consulting firm. We offer a number of services in, in, around leadership development and talent organizational effectiveness. I would say for anyone that's listening, culture, I think, will be the, the big focus for the next six plus months. It already mm -hmm. has been talked about, but how to, how to maintain and build and, and strengthen your culture when you've got a, not only a, a virtual workforce, but also now it's going to be a hybrid workforce for the mm -hmm. foreseeable future as people start going back to offices and if they haven't been already. So I think this whole concept of culture and what's leadership leaders, a leader's role in how to cultivate and, and strengthen and maintain your culture, even change your culture, I think that's going to be an additional skill set that we're going to see for the next six plus months. So I'd, be, I'd ask your, your, your followers to pay attention to that. Yeah, I love, I love, love, love that answer. Culture is, culture is the thing that just makes the day easy to get through for us here at, at, at Boxer at my company. We've got, we've got a great one and everyone on the team just has fun and enjoys each other's company. So it's, I think that's, that's huge. And I love that answer. So Chuck Muller, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Coffee with Coaches. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. We will see you all next time. I appreciate it, Michael. Thanks for having me.